Hello everyone, John Vincent from Swoosh Technologies here. I'm going to review uh, a scenario that uh, was presented to me recently and uh, I was able to take advantage of the new merge path option uh, made available in NX 1953 uh, inside of the CAM environment. Uh, and I have two kind of uh, two different use cases uh, uh, for this uh, for this new functionality. Um, so, so two things. First off, we have this part, and we, we really have two different uh, uh, pain points presented to us. Uh, first is this small feature. Uh, uh, you know, it looks like a pretty simple feature, but uh, per the customer, this is required to be milled um, with essentially a slotting motion with a, a ball end mill, uh, so size on size here. And we wanted to have, uh, it's, this is a harder stainless steel, so we wanted to, to uh, and a small tool, I think it's a 3 32nd inch uh, uh, ball mill that we're using here, about a 2 millimeter uh, tool. And so what we want to do is we want to have the tool path um, drive this geometry, and uh, for multiple passes we want, we want to essentially just offset in Z. Uh, which this geometry is curved up these blends. Um, and so typically if you use uh, offset, um, you know, I'm going to use a curved drive toolpath. In this instance, we can just look and see what the toolpath looks like. Let me jump down in here. Okay. And I'll just step through. And so what was really the desired outcome was to have this toolpath, but offset it uh, four depths um, uh, directly in Z, uh, not offset from the part geometry at all. Uh, so that presented a little bit uh, of an interesting scenario for from the programming side of things. Uh, and eventually we came up with the method just to use uh, instance toolpaths. Uh, but that brings some other obstacles. Uh, in this case, the customer had some... Um, the post driven drives some some different motions, uh, go home motions at the end of operations. Uh, so we didn't want to really break this all apart, and we were able to work around this issue by using the merge path option. Uh, and so what we can see here, I'm just going to do a verification on the merge path, and we'll see that uh, through the merge path option, we are actually uh, adding non-cutting motions between all the uh, the tool paths uh, and essentially we're getting one continuous uh, output from one continuous operation here. Uh, so in this case we're starting on the on the top surface and working our way down back and forth. So that's exactly the the uh, outcome that the customer wanted. Uh, so again before uh, I'm gonna get rid of this current merge path. Uh, so I'll just move my operations outside of that and I'm just going to review how to create a merge path. Uh, so now merge path is really part of a program group and so I recommend uh, in this case I'll just uh, right click on my program, my existing program group and I'll insert a new program group. Now you'll find merge path, this option, is only available under the mill multi-axis and mill multi-blade um, operation types here. Now you can attach other operations. Uh, in this case I'm using a fixed axis contour operation uh, and later I'll be using a contour profile which is a multi-axis operation. Uh, but I'll, I'll go ahead and create this merged path. Uh, we'll say okay. I'm just going to say okay for right now and reorder my tree and add in my existing operations into merged path. Uh, so now when I go ahead and edit my merged path, I have two different sort orders. Uh, so we have some, some different options uh, by contour or by concatenation. I don't know how to say that word. That's all right though. Um, but I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use that, essentially it's just by order, <laughs> uh, and by contour count, I'm actually going to use that other option here in, uh, my next example. Uh, but we can also specify non-cutting moves. Uh, and you can see that we can set all the, the typical settings, uh, whether you want to use smoothing or, 
or set your engage motion, so on and so forth. Uh, but let's go ahead and just generate. Uh, let's say, okay, I need to regenerate this first operation. And now I'll generate the merge path. And okay, we have all these tool paths uh, combined here. Uh, so pretty simplistic scenario for merge path. Uh, but I think I have an even more interesting scenario, and, and I'll go a little bit more in depth here on uh, creating a merge path. Uh, so in this instance, we want to finish this inside uh, the ID of this part, uh, this thin walled part. It's only about 20, uh, 20 thousandths thick, uh, which is what, half a millimeter uh, for wall thickness here. Uh, so it's fairly thin walled material. And uh, essentially what we wanted to do is uh, be able to cut, uh, kind of do a semi-finish pass uh, at, at, you know, one specified depth of cut, and then do a few finish passes, um, just stepping over, I think we're leaving 10 thousands of stock with, with semi, and then kind of do two or three depths um, in that same region that we've just semi and do that same motion over and over and over until we get to the bottom. Uh, so essentially what it looks like here, I have a contour profile operation where I'm semi-finishing my part. Again, I'll open up this operation and we can see, if I jump over to the main tab, uh, we're leaving, yeah, 10 thousandths uh, of stock here. Cutting three depths. All right, and now we're going to do our finish pass. Uh, and again, we have... Now, cutting to zero, you know, cutting to nominal, we're finishing this. And we have eight passes, eight depths. Uh, but we don't want to semi all the way down, uh, lose some of the strength we have by removing the material. So we want to do a semi pass, do a couple finish passes, do another semi pass, finish passes, so on and so forth. And now, merge path allows us to do this quite easily. And right now I'm going to just uh, look at the, the results that, that we have. If I replay this tool path, and I'm just going to kind of roughly step through this, we can see that we are coming down and we're cutting this third uh, depth that it looks like. This is one of my semi-finished passes. Again, let me, if I snap around to the top here, and we can see that, yep, we are staying 10 thousandths off the wall here. We're on a semi-pass. So, okay, that's going to step all the way around my my profile, uh, which ends up being this same tool path. And now as I step out of the cut, I'm going to uh, retract. And I'm cutting, moving back up to the first finish pass and engaging into my cut. Again, let me snap to the top of top view. And you can see, yep, we are indeed doing a finish pass. Uh, and likewise, we're going to come circle around, retract off the part, step down to that next finish step, finish at that level, finish the, the whole profile, and when we retract out, our next motion is going to jump down to the second semi-finish pass. There, we're in the cut. And we can see, yep, we're staying off the wall there for that semi-finish pass. So all that's being done with the functionality inside of Merge Path. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of recreate my merged path here. Again, I will right-click, Insert, Program Group. I'll be selecting Merge Path. And I'll say OK. And again, I'm just going to say OK to accept this. And I'm going to generate my two existing tool paths and move them inside of the new merged path group I have. And I'll go ahead and double click and edit this operation uh, or this merge path functionality. And so in this instance, I'm going to use by contour count. So when we do this, we are setting um, this list for different number of operations uh, that, that we've created you know, that are inside of our merged path group. Uh, so in this case, contours, I want to um, cut one contour, you know, one depth of my semi-finished pass. And I want to leg behind uh, one path. And I'll explain this here in a minute. 
Now in the second uh, second operation, I want to cut uh, three paths, and, and I think I just made a uh, my first set there. I, I, I wanted zero for leg. Uh, I want one for the leg on the second operation group. So let me go ahead and make a change there. One, and, and I'll just review what I've what I've done. All right, so we have the first operation, which is my semi-finished contour profile. I'm cutting one contour with no leg. My second operation is my finished contour profile that has three contours per depth um, and lagging behind one. If you remember, I did a semi-pass. We cut two paths, uh, finished paths, then went back to semi-finish. And I'm going to go ahead and generate. And if you notice, first thing, um, we have these smooth uh, um, connections. Uh, and that's not what I want right now. I, I, I still want to have my uh, engages kind of normal to the part here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and edit my non-cutting moves within inside of Merge Path. And I'm going to turn off the override with smooth connectors. And then in my engage motions, I'm going to set uh, my parameters. And in this case, I want to use arc normal to tool axis. And I'll make my radius a little bit smaller here. And go ahead and generate this tool path again. And now you can see the uh, engage and, and uh, traversal motions uh, like we saw in the original tool path I have. Uh, so again, the leg behind setting is telling uh, NX with the number of depths of or contours that I have, I always want to leg behind one in the offsetting here. Um, so in this case, uh, the you know this initial case is the other settings I used uh, what we first demonstrated. Uh, we're doing a semi pass and then a finish and a finish, and again we have three contours, but we're lagging behind one, so we don't finish the third one. Uh, likewise, if I would extend this and leg behind two. and now generate. I will do my semi-finish pass and only one finish pass. Uh, we can prove that out real quick here. All right, we're still going down to our finish pass. It's gonna go all the way around. I'm just gonna jump through a little bit quicker. We're gonna retract and go up to our first finish pass. Okay, and then that would proceed around. And now instead of jumping to our second finish pass, we are going to jump all the way down to our second semi-finish pass. So it's a way to control how many depths uh, you, you can uh, skip or, or leave uh, in between the different contours there. So you have a lot of control over this. Uh, okay. And so I'll go ahead and put my leg back to, to one for this case. Um, and again, it's just going to continue working all the way down. And now you can do a semi-finish and finish path very easily inside uh, essentially of one output here. Thank you.